I, and, that, I, and that's where I, that is where we would be headed if I, these porous I, I, but, borders but again, are allowed. My point, my point is, is simply this, and uh, President Fox, former President of Mexico, is right there. It, my point is, if, if right now more people are leaving than coming in. And of all the problems we have, that seems to me to be not a very big one, but it, it is certainly a, a, a fundamental to, 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 to Donald Trump's campaign. Okay, how about this? If we didn't have a wall, how about if we just adopt Mexico's immigration policies and the punishment that people would have if they illegally uh, cross borders into Mexico? Um, maybe that would solve it. Because so, you guys uh, are pretty tough, aren't you? you are, you're tough on that okay, side right, of it. Right. Let's, let's go on because I really want to understand. So, so there, there are two points of views here, and I, want, I, I, and I, I hear this a lot. There's a point of view in, in terms of the Republican Party that says, look, we, we are becoming a, a all-white political party. And if we don't reach out and try to draw other people into our party, we're in a, in a, in a demographic death cycle. That was the, 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 the famous autopsy that the chairman of the Republican Party did in early 2013. There's another group of the Republican Party that says that our problem is, is we're insufficiently loyal to our principles in that if we did that, there's a huge number of disengaged, disinterested voters that will rally to our cause and reward us with a victory in this election. From everything that I know, you're a member of group two. So tell us how Donald Trump gets from here to 270 electoral votes in November. Well, I, I think that Trump would make a mistake if he were to allow himself to be pigeonholed by the media, especially, um, to uh, allow this perception that he isn't in that group to um, the diversity that he has in terms of support, I, I think, is, is significant. And there's always there are, there are always great ways to get out there. And let different demographics know but see i am so my, i hate being labeled any any sort of, of racism it, it, it just kills me my husband he's alaska native he's eskimo so in fact he was here first you know he was up north before white man was he and and my kids being native then too uh, living it it makes me even more um, uh, irritated with those who would just want to slap a label on any Republican that they have uh, any racist bone in their body. And, and even the topic... I'm not... And even the, I'm, 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 I'm making a even the topic, you know what, for, for, I say, most thinking Americans who believe in equal opportunity and believe that all men are, we're all created equal. Uh, it's far removed from us, James, it's far removed from me to think that there needs to be um, th this uh, politically driven division that, oh my gosh, if it's, if it's um, uh, allowed to uh, be perpetuated, we're never going to be able to win again. And th that's just buying into that false narrative that there is a hint of racism uh, uh, me, here, uh, and there is Let me... The Republican Party has lost the popular vote in five out of the last six presidential elections. That's a fact. Do you think that they are losing presidential elections because they are insufficiently inclusive or that they're insufficiently pure? Or that the media is driving this false narrative okay. that any of us All right, so, would so, ever okay. So I right, go ahead. Would ever want that kind of division? To, it, it's it's a politically driven division, and sure. and from the top, from the administration, we see our nation being divided on the basis of race, uh, color, creed, religion. Uh, normal people, we're, but, normal but, people but, don't but, do but that. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to drive. You know, the guy who's booing. Really, you don't 
be you. you. Really? Be you. People are going to say what they want. I'm trying again. He didn't Strategically, get it. Strategically, usually when a party loses five out of six, it says to itself, Let, let's huddle up and rethink this thing and scratch you know, a new plan out. I, I'm saying to you, you, you think the reason that you're on this kind of bad streak is because the, the, the presentation is, is, I'm trying to, is not inclusive? May I give you an not? example? Okay, sure. Yes. As I said, again, in a speech earlier today, uh, Donald Trump, for instance, he has been in the spotlight for decades, 30-some years. He has been elevated and praised for his accomplishments, his diversity. You know, he's been on both sides of the aisle. He knows how both sides work. He has friends in um, a minority demographic. He, he has friends and colleagues, black friends and colleagues. Nobody has, and you know what? He's been praised for that. And you know what? He has never been perceived nor called a racist until he decided to run against the Democrats. That's the way it works. So, well, a constant kind of thing that I, I, I hear and you, and you talk about, you talk about it now, and I, I've heard you refer to it as a lot of people, the lamestream media. You really don't like the media. That's pretty clear. Is that, am I, am I correct? In well, I come answer? from the media. I started out as a sportscaster. That's my college degree, is, is having studied communications, journalism, and political science. So I have a great respect for what the media is supposed to be doing, and that's the who, what, where, and when, and why of an issue, and then uh, reporting that and allowing the people who are intelligent enough to make up their mind on um, uh, judging what, whatever the issue is being reported on. That, that's not the way that the mainstream media works but, anymore. But, but, and that's but why tell us, the mainstream uh, media. But, but, I, I say, but Chris, tell us who, who's agreed. Who, who's, if they are reporting and they're doing this, Tell us where they're going wrong. Name names. Tell, tell us who it is. I, I mean, it, 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 just to say, well, the media, it, it, that's a big thing. It, okay, it, it, let's take Katie Couric. Okay, okay, let's take Katie Couric. Who wants names? Let's name names. That's right on, let's name names. All right. Okay, Katie Couric. You know what she did recently? What she did recently in hosting this documentary on guns. They selectively edited commentary interviews from participants, the pro-gun people, in this documentary to make it look like they didn't have answers or, uh, you know, they, they uh, didn't know what they were talking about. They were um, a, a false narrative on their side. And she had to admit to they, whoever produced this, this documentary, that yes, it was selective editing. So there's an example. Let, let, that me, I let, can let, let me name, do, do you think, do you think that that's the media, okay? Do you, you think, think that the okay? media, good work, do you think that the media looks down on the kind of people that support you? Who are the kind of people, uh, people who your support supporters, me? Your supporters. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Do, do you believe that, that the, who, who the are, media... Wait, who are the kind of people who that support That support me? you. Your supporters. The people you go to Iowa, the people that show up and are supporting Donald Trump, do you think that the, the, when, when the media sees people at a Trump rally, do you think that tendency is to look down on Do I people? think that like um, coverage of Tea Party movement events, right, yes. if they, uh, do I think that they falsely reported that um, we were violent and um, uh, hate-filled and all that? Yeah, I think that that was some false reporting, definitely. And um, I think that uh, there's been a lot of research that, that proves that. I mean, it's an inarguable that, 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 of course, that's the way that the, the media has worked, yes. So, so, I mean, th that you don't feel like the Tea Party people are accorded the same respect as other groups in the United States? True. In, in, in tell, in, and again, I go back to how, in, there are these Republicans here, and I see that, how does Donald Trump get from here to 270? What does he have to do? Well, I, I do think, I, I hear, you know, a, a bit of a suggestion, perhaps, even in your question, that, that uh, what does he have to do? Does he have to get out there and uh, address more of the groups that some politicians want to divide us into? Well, yes. I mean, it, 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 it does no harm. It does a lot more good than harm to get out there and talk to, say, a group of Hispanics about how important it is.
happiness that they be respected, that they are here legally and they work so hard to keep their jobs that it doesn't do them any good to allow illegal immigrants to come on over and compete for their jobs, to take their jobs. So yes, it is valuable that the candidate get out there and speak to as many groups as possible. And, and, and what, what should his, his message is, his makeup, do you think his message is sufficient to win the election? Or you think you want, and how does he unify the Who Republic? can argue against making America great again? Yes, I think his message is a good message. His message is one that, you know, we have so much potential here as Americans to start winning again, but we need free trade deals. They, they are. We need to be able to have secure borders in order in order for economically and national security wise with with our borders how important it is but when we talk about economics how important it is that we have a leader like trump other leaders too who come from the private sector and understand what it takes to create wealth which will create jobs we need leaders who understand the conditions that will allow wealth to be created and then favor those conditions. I talk about this all the time. That includes energy independence and that includes limiting government so the private sector innovation can soar again. Well, why yes, that message, and that message applies to every American who is concerned about our children getting good jobs and concerned about a nation that currently is so in debt, you know, $20 trillion, our kids, our grandkids, they're never gonna be able to pay this off. And the worst part is there's no end in sight. We have no budgets. So, Nobody's crafting and presenting budgets to the nation as they're spending our money. So his well, message well, is right to reverse all that, change well, it up. Well, why, does, why does Donald Trump support no cuts in Medicare and Social Security? Because he, Which accounts for so much of the budget. Why, because he's explaining how he believes with a more robust economy, these these things, especially so, Social Security, that people have already paid into, that it has been an investment on their part, and they expect and they should be able so to get are, out you're, you're, of that system what they've paid in. He says that as the economy does become more robust and as more revenue is circulated, then we'd be able to pay for some of these uh, these these um, uh, benefits. So he's not really for cutting anything. Own. He's saying we can just grow our. On growth. those two issues, he's been specific about how he believes that we can um, restructure in the future, which will have to take place because we can't keep going the way we're going. But for those who have paid into the system, it's like those who want to screw people out of their pensions. Some of these big corporations, when no, a pension is a promise. And same thing with Social Security. But. No, we do have to look, obviously, about new people coming into the system. We can't keep going the way we're going. I mean, it's kind of like a Ponzi scheme so, that's going to so blow we, up we on us. Have, uh, um, so we shouldn't have new people in the system or what? No, I don't, I don't oh, my goodness. Do. Yes. I mean, if, if people want to stay in the system, let them stay in the system. But that's another point. I sure wish people had a choice whether they would like to keep more of the money that they earn and invest it on their own or whether government should keep taking their money via income tax and different taxes and government investing it in whatever they're going to invest in it and keep losing money, losing money, losing money. Again, what has led us to this $20 trillion debt, but the way that government has worked all these years. So, I, so, so you're, saying if, if, you're saying if a young person doesn't want to pay Social Security taxes, they can opt out? I sure wish that more people in America, okay. more employers, had more choices in what to do with the income that they earn. And as importantly, I wish that more job creators, more employers would be able to have more say in what it is that they produce so that they can prioritize as they see best and they can reinvest, which will create more opportunities and more jobs. Right. It's all about, it's the freedom, so, stupid. So you supported uh, George W. Bush for president. Uh, he was a disastrous businessman. That didn't seem to affect him. Uh, John McCain, I don't think, ever worked a day in the private sector. Um, I don't know, but you just skipped Obama, so let's I, talk I'm not, about it. No, I'm not working. I, business, success in the business world is not, that's not what I'm saying. You're saying that's an integral part of a reason that you support it, a candidate. It, it is. I'm saying that it any is. number of Republican candidates have never been in, in the world of business and 
you're for them. I'm, I don't. I don't think it's a. It, it's, it's well, you're not going to get. You're thing. not going to get me to say rah rah for people who've never worked in the private sector, like Obama. Never right. having, never having balanced a budget. Right. Always being able to spend other but, people's money, which get, makes them addicted but, to but, opium. But other that, people's government, money. But I, I and understand. then they but, become more powerful as but, they redistribute that right. other people's I, I, money. I understand. That it's not a requirement for me to be for somebody. I'm saying to you that it's a requirement to you to have many Republican nominees. You know, Bob Doe never spent, it been, was in Congress since 1959. It didn't bother any Republican. It bothered yeah, I me. Mean, uh, again, again, John McCain was in the Navy, then he went right into Congress. He never created a single job in his life. I, didn't, I don't think that, that's not the reason that I didn't vote, but all I'm saying is you seem to apply I don't want to quite Okay, yeah, I know where you're now. going. And um, but by the way, McCain's military service, no, I respect okay. that. No, I, and I will I, 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 I won't I, I, condemn that. But um, let's talk about then somebody on the other side of the aisle because you, you're, man, you're so one-sided. You keep picking on the Republicans. Let's talk about Hillary's private yeah. sector service. The Hillary's private sector um, experience that has led to how many of those scandals and problems and, and firing that, that she went through? Right. Um, so her private sector experience. Well, again, it, it, it's not. Again, I, I, I can't tell. What? Why? It's why not a. It, the I know, truth? It, it's not a requirement so of mine. It, uh, Ronald Reagan was, was a union leader, an actor. He wasn't exactly. It, it's not a requirement of mine. You had one said, by the way, Hillary was on the board of Walmart, and some people say it was a private sector company, but we'll let that go. All right, we got to run. I'm going to ask you to, for Q and A to come up, ask a question, ask anything you want. <laughs> Holy moly! All right. You know, and by the way, speaking of uh, Reagan being that union leader, uh, as a former sister in the IBW and Todd's union work too, uh, the, the great appreciation that we know that Reagan had for the hard-working essential brothers and sisters in the union, um, that, that so also is to be praised. But he, is, right. but he was a private sector guy. Let's go. All right. build it. Governor Pay, um, Palin, first of all, you look a lot better than Tina Fey. Um, what do you say? Come you up here. Me? Come up here and talk into my microphone. Come on. Campaign finance reform is quite a big issue for me in this upcoming election, as I'm sure it is for many other Americans as well. Uh, what I would like to know is, do you think that Donald Trump would appoint a Supreme Court justice to effectively deal with the issue? And the, the second part of my question is, more generally, how do you think we can work to get big money out of politics? Yeah, well, uh, you know, Trump will have a long list of the criteria, of course, that, that will have to be followed to uh, appoint the conservative Supreme Court judge that all of us would hope that he, he will choose. And I do have faith that it will be a conservative. And hopefully that conservative would understand, too, how, po how the big money is so corrupting in politics and how in this day and age it seems like if you don't have that big money that's driving you as a candidate and driving your agenda, you're not going to win. 
So, yeah, I, um, I would hope that uh, Trump understands that, too. And, um, yeah, I, I don't want to see big money in there um, warping the system either because that, that's been part of the problem, is Wall Street driving the agenda. Those who, those who claim that they don't take money from Wall Street, Hillary, and then we turn around and see that she has accepted $17 million from Wall Street for, this, for her speeches and all that. Money, money. unfortunately, the big money, it, it's corrupting and, and it allows for um, too much of a warped system. Yes. As someone who has run for vice president, you could be well situated to advise Mr. Trump on what characteristics or credentials he should be looking for. What would you tell him? I would tell him to find someone who um, understands who uh, the boss would be, um, someone who is not running to, um, I mean, somebody that, that he could serve with who he wouldn't need a taste, food taste tester around him, you know? You know what I mean? He's someone who's gonna be loyal to what the boss's agenda is. Uh, so that's gonna be real important. And then someone with that experience too, again, coming from the private sector, connected to the essential people in this country, um, not part of that political establishment that has been part of the problem. Hi, you said that um, pension is a promise um, and also is a promise the Paris Climate Accords. And Donald Trump has been very outright about saying that if he's elected, he will rescind our commitments globally to uh, combating climate change. How can you support a candidate that goes against the environment? Well, thankfully, Trump has a good grasp on um, the need to listen to real science, not uh, of the global warming agenda to um, to drive our nation's agenda but when it comes to when it comes to the the promises made that, that you fear uh, a Trump presidency would break we have to remember that a lot of these commitments that have been made say in the Obama administration they're not the people's commitment they're not the people's will it's personally coming from some then, then in Obama the Obama administration, administration but, but, making these agreements Obama did win and the election Right. He won the election. Right. So, so, so people, listen. Okay. So, when someone else wins the election, right. is their will then? Does it mean nothing? Yeah. If if a uh, Trump or someone comes in there right. and wants to renegotiate or rethink some of the agreements that have been made in, on a, a global level, what's well, the difference? Well, he can. He, he has if that he, right. If he wins, if he wins, the, wins the election, he can do it. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So do you, do you agree with Trump that global warming is a hoax by the Chinese? I don't know whose hoax it is. I don't know if it's just, uh, just the Chinese. But I mean, but look you, at, when I was governor of Alaska and right. I had to sue the feds because of some of the aspects of the global warming, it wasn't even called climate change then, you have to keep changing it, the global warming agenda, as they tried to stymie some of Alaska's resource but development I, I projects. I just asked you a question. Is it a hoax? Some of, Some of it is. Some of it is a hoax. Some of it is. Listen. No. Next. Next. No. Some of it is. And and a lot of research proves that when you talk about like right. the, the the hockey stick graphs and all these right. things that some of the that Al Gore and those guys right. invented, if you right. still claim that he invented it. Right. Um, no, a lot of that has been bogus. And okay. really Again, with hopes that it's some people, it's like a conspiracy to get us in. Let's this will be question. our last question. Uh, I'll be quick. Um, in uh, Mr. Carvel's uh, idea of trying to get uh, a better and clearer understanding of the way that you think, um, in regards to this idea of the media being biased, in America, to the best of my knowledge, Fox News is the largest 
uh, media, uh, cable media outlet with the, the most popular, most yes. popular yes. largest number of views. Yeah. So this idea of the media as a singular, when the largest player happens to be a very conservative, from the best of my understanding, media organization. They're not the largest, but yes. Um, at, at you know, cable, and there yes. are very, and there is certainly a preponderance of other very conservative media outlets out there. When you use the term the media as a singular, how does that? How do you reconcile that? I'm not saying that some folks on Fox aren't a part of that, being a part of the media that uh, absolutely wears their bias on their sleeve. I, I you know, there, there are some on Fox media who are like that. But no, in general, that, that, that mainstream media, you really, you, you, you can't argue with their bias because it, it's glaring, trust me. Do you think Fox has a bias? I believe that Fox has a conservative bent, yes, um, though they, oh, you don't? Well, they do, you know? And you know what? Thank God for that. What would America do without Fox? Do you guys only want a liberal bent? Do you only want a liberal bent? That's some of that, um, that hypocritical double standard. I don't want to hear anybody else's opinion. I'm going to be intolerant. I don't want to hear Fox. Why not hear the other side? I hear the other side all the time. But, uh, wait, but that was it? Oh, well, is that uh, somebody calling it? Uh, wait, we can't hear you, I'm sorry. I would be totally offended, yes. 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 All right. Let, right. right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And anyone who would say that someone of color is less American than a, a, a white okay. person, for shame. It's, it's disgusting. The, the, okay. The, the, okay. The powers I do. I, to be, I respect that, that. The powers to be have yeah. shut Thank you. the sound off. I, I, uh, Governor Palin, uh, thank you very much for agreeing to do thank this. Thank you, guys. Uh,